Hey, welcome to AC's 8-Bit Zone. The Color Computer 1 and Color Computer 2 had really poor video output with their RF modulator, so there have been a lot of composite mods over the years. Today's episode is about a new PCB that I made, and I'm going to show you how I built it, and we're going to give it a shot, try it out today. That's starting right now. A couple years ago I had uh, two or three videos about composite mods and I did those mods in place inside the RF modulator can itself. Uh, for this video I've made two new boards that are actually sort of copies of old original boards. There was a uh, direct video board that Tandy themselves designed and put into the education models of the Coco. And then there was a Mark Data Products um, Universal Video Driver board. And I've reproduced both of those uh, with a little bit of a twist in a couple of cases. Uh, and I'm going to give those a shot. So today's episode is on the Mark Data products uh, called the Universal Video Driver. And uh, let's go ahead and build it and try it out in this Coco 2. The Coco 2 that I'm modding today is a 263127B. It was the 64K Color Computer 2 and uh, usually came, maybe always came, with Extended Color Basic. So the RF output is just abysmal. And there's really not much that can be done to improve this. There's, there's really no other uh, noise in, in this uh, RF range. So there's, you know, there's not interference that we need to knock out. I think it's just the, the age of the, uh, the components and maybe even the design of the MC1372 itself. So you just can't get good quality out of the RF modulator. And really with composite mods, you can't expect a whole lot more than this. But this is the baseline. This is what we have to work with. Let's build up this mod and let's compare this Mark Data Products circuit to uh, what we're seeing here. Okay, this should be mostly all that I need for this composite mod. The Mark Data board was a, a small board. Uh, it was actually larger than this one that I've recreated, but it was a small, simple board, and it mainly used some of these components sort of to the right of my board. And I've added some circuits uh, that will allow this to be a more complete mod in case I want to actually remove the RF modulator from the Coco 2, assuming this works. I'll remove the RF modulator and this will hopefully fit down into the spot where the modulator was occupied before. Okay, so with a, a few test clips, a few capacitors and resistors, I should have about everything that I need here. So let's get this started. The, the Mark Data Board was really simple. It had uh, a small board that was pre-populated with components and there were five clip leads and so it was a solderless installation and Mark Data had uh, figures and instructions on how to install this in virtually all the Coco 1's and the first couple of Coco 2's of the day. Um, I believe this came out in 1983, updated in 1984. Well without further ado, let's build the board.
Now all we need to do is find the right points to clip this board into the cocoa. Okay. Okay. Hey, okay. <clears throat> okay, so uh, that was very lucky. I got it to fire up on the first try. And uh, this is, this picture quality is, you know, really no better than the, the RF modulator uh, was. With these long lead wires, there is the potential f for noise to creep into the signals. So, um, I think this is a good enough candidate to go ahead and try to solder it into the board. So that's what I'll do next. I'm going to remove the RF modulator and uh, place this board down in, in that position. First I'll have to solder on a few more components. There's a, a place here for the MC1372. That's the RF modulator I see, and it's normally inside here in the RF can. And uh, when we replace the RF modulator, we, we need to provide that part here on the, on the PCB. When I moved the board, I found one resistor had fa completely fallen off. So I wanted to make sure that everything was still okay. And so I resoldered the resistor and I wanted to reconnect to make sure everything was still okay. So uh, yeah, it's still good. If, if anything, I, I think that component helped the picture a little bit. So at least it's no worse. Okay, now back to the bench, remove the RF modulator, place the, the composite mod back in its place, and I'll be right back. Okay, RF modulator pulled out, and here is the composite mod board replaced in its location. And I desoldered the 1372 from inside the RF can and installed it here in the socket. Okay, let's plug everything in and give it a try. Okay, here we go. Okay, good. Again, I'll say with with composite output, it, it never looks the best, but this does look better than the RF modulator did, or at least as good. And uh, I have an output resistor here that uh, is tunable. Let's see if it makes any difference. Okay, so it's, it can, so it does brighten. Okay, that's about as good as it's going to get. Okay, so composite mod based on Mark Data Products, the Universal Video Driver Board, and with some additions to socket the 1372 so that it can replace the RF modulator 
instead of clipping into the existing circuit. So a uh, fairly successful mod. If you're interested in purchasing a board, I'm going to be selling some of these composite mod kits. So email me at ac8bitzone and I'll send you information about uh, purchasing and uh, pricing and, and payment. All right, well, that was all for this one. And next video, I will show another composite mod. And after that, we'll be getting into a series on mechanical keyboards and a build of an all new Color Computer 3. So for now, that's it. Hope you enjoy the rest of your week. See you in the next one. Bye.